Hello and welcome. In today's lesson, we will talk about the cosine law. Remember that to solve right angle triangles, we use a formula called SOHCAHTOA. And remember again that SOHCAHTOA can only be used in right angle triangles. To solve non right angle triangles, we learned that we can use the sine law. And just to refresh our memory, the sine law looks like this. A over sine angle A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. Which tells us that in a triangle A, B, C, where angles are represented by uppercase letters A, B, and C, side lengths are represented by lowercase letters A, B, and C, the ratio of a side length with a sine ratio of the angle opposite to it is the same throughout the triangle. However, in some cases, we were not given enough information in order to solve an acute triangle by using the sine law. And that's what I want to start talking about before we move on to cosine law. There are only two cases where the sine law cannot help to solve the triangle. And here goes the first one. Let's take a look at the triangle ABC. This is an acute triangle where angle A is different than angle B and different than angle C. The side lengths of this triangle can be labeled by lowercase a opposite angle A lowercase b, opposite b, and lowercase c, opposite angle c. The sine law for this triangle would be a over sine of a equals b over sine b equals c over sine of c. Suppose that in this triangle we were given the, length, the measurements as follows. Suppose that we knew that the side length C was 3 units, the side length B was 2 units, and the angle A was 70 degrees. If we substitute all the information given into the sine law formula, then we will notice the following. So, A is unknown, angle A is 70, so A over sine 70, B is 2. Angle B is unknown, and C is 3, angle C is unknown. Remember that in order to use the sine law, we're going to need to have one of the ratios with both numbers in it. As you've seen here, in the first ratio we have an unknown A, second ratio angle B, and the last ratio the angle C is missing. So in this case, we'll say that we are unable to use the sine law in order to find any other additional or additional measurements in the triangle. So the sine law won't help there. So in this case, I would say that the sine law will not help. And I'm going to erase this for a second. I'm not for a second. I'm going to erase this. <laughs> and I will say that if we are given two sides and the angle in between in a triangle, we are unable to use the sine law to solve the triangle. Okay? Now, I usually try to remember this by looking at it as the crocodile's mouth, where the two sides play the role of the jaws, and here is the angle in between them. So when I know these two and the angle in between, I cannot use the sine law. Okay? And, just so it looks like, like it, there is another case where we cannot use the sine law. And this is the case when we know all three sides of the triangle. For example, we know that this is 3, and this is 2, and this one here is 4. We're going to say that in this case, if we were to write the sine law, then we would say that 3 over sine of angle C equals 4 over sine of A and then equals 2 over sine of B. Again, as you see in here, 
in neither ratios we don't see the we, we don't have both values okay none of the ratios have both values which means we cannot use the sign law so I call this the case of kind of a circular information but you can use your own ways to actually remember the two cases so when I have all three sides and nothing else okay then I would say that I cannot use the I cannot use the sign law okay so just to make this a little bit more memorable so no angles are given so in the two cases that I just mentioned what we have to use is the cosine law so what is the cosine law I call the cosine law the Pythagorean formula for non right angle triangles Remember that if you are in a right angle triangle and if the sides of it are indicated by letters A, B, and C, we say that C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Now, cosine law resembles this formula, okay, but it's slightly different. So let's get started. In this non right angle triangle, we have angles A, B, and C. Here goes lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c, the three sides, angles A, B, and C. Now, <clears throat> we labeled each side of the triangle, and then we have to use the cosine law. I'm going to start with the side C. That's because it's closer to the Pythagorean theorem. Now, this is how we write the cosine law. We say that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So, but that it doesn't end in here. It has another part and that is due to the fact that angle c is not 90 like it was in here. And we say minus twice the product of the two sides that you see here, A and B, times the cosine of the angle C. So I will point at a few things so that we can memorize the formula more easily. So we have this Pythagorean formula in here, and then we always have to take out or subtract twice the product of the side lengths that are on the right side of the equation, and then the cosine of the angle that is opposite to the side that we're trying to find. So if we have here angle C, that is because we had the lowercase side C on the other side. So when it comes to writing cosine law for side A, then we say that I would equal that would be a squared equals the, the, the sum of the squares of the other two sides, so b squared plus c squared, and then minus twice the product of side b times side c. That's because it's the sides on the right side of the equation. And then times the cosine of the angle that is opposite to the side that you are trying to find. So a. If you want, you can try to write the cosine law for side B. And I'm going to continue here. B squared equals, again, the sum of the squares of the other two sides, so A squared plus C squared, minus twice the product of A and C, which are the two sides in the right side of the equation, and then times the cosine of the angle that is opposite to the side that you are trying to find, so cosine b. Now, we use the cosine law to find side lengths, and these are the side length formulas, all of them. Okay, I'm gonna draw a better square. You gotta be persistent sometimes. <laughs> Go against all the odds, okay. Okay. Now, 
We can use the cosine law also to find angle measurements. And that is ha what that happens usually in the second case when we don't have any of the angles, right? But we know all three sides of the triangle. So how do you use the formula when we want to find the angles? Remember that the formulas for the angles are all derived by, from the formulas for the side length. So you simply have to solve for the angle right here. So to find the angle, you need to know the cosine of that angle. I'm going to do the first example, or derive the first example, just to show you how we get the formula. It's always good to know how we get the formula, so we always have the confidence that we know how to get them when we don't or can't remember them. So suppose that we have a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus twice bc cosine of a. If we try to solve for side a, uh, for, for, sorry, for angle A, then we are going to have to isolate this whole term. So we're going to bring this term to the left side of the equation, and that will make that term positive, 2BC cos A. And then on the right side of the equation, we'll keep B squared plus C squared. So they were already there, nothing changes for them. But a square will join them, and a square is coming from the left side, so it will become negative. Now, again, to isolate the cosine of angle a, we are going to have to divide both sides by 2bc. 2bc. And that will give us cos a equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared divided by 2bc. And at the end, we just use inverse cosine of this whole formula, b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc. So how can we memorize this formula? Well, Remember that when we're trying to find the cosine of a, you're going to have to subtract a squared in the numerator. The rest is the sum of the squares of the two other sides. And then you have to divide by 2bc, because remember that used to be the coefficient of cos a. So what I'm going to do now is write the formula for each angle. So this is how I try to write them. I would say angle A equals, and I always start with cos negative 1 because I'm getting angle A from inversing the cosine ratio. And then I'll open big brackets with a fraction line in the middle because I know that I'm going to have a fraction. Now, since I'm finding angle A, I always minus A squared at the end. And the rest of the terms will be the sum of the squares of the other two sides, b squared plus c squared, and in the denominator we have 2bc, which will be twice the product of these two sides that have been added together. So let's try the next one. Angle b again will be inverse cos, and then here we go again, big fraction. Because we're finding angle B, we are subtracting B squared. And the other two sides, we must add A squared plus C squared. And down in the denominator, we have 2AC. And last but not least, the angle C. We have inverse cosine, open big brackets, big fraction line, we're finding angle C, which means that we must subtract C squared at the end. And down here we'll have A squared plus B squared, so the sum of the squares of the other two sides, divided by 2AB. So these are all the cosine formulas that help us find angles in non-right angle triangles. So let's take a look at some examples where we use the cosine law. Remember that the formulas 
both sine and cosine are not fixed. We don't call sine law A over sine A equals B over sine B in any triangle because we need to label the angles based on whatever the name of the triangle is. So, if we want to write the cosine law, we must label first the sides in relation to the angles opposite to them. So here we go. In the first triangle, we have angles K different from L and different from angle M. Opposite angle K is lowercase k, opposite M, lowercase m, opposite L, lowercase l. If you are trying to find side ML, which is this side in here, that means we are trying to find side K lowercase k. So to write the cosine law for side k, then we're going to write k squared equals, remember this is a side formula. This must end with the cosine of angle k. And since we already have k squared in this side, we're going to write the sum of the squares of the other two sides first, and then minus twice the product of these two sides we have on the right side of the equation, okay? And with this, we have written the formula for the side k. The next one, we want to find, write the cosine law for the side PR in the triangle PQR. So again, we are going to label the angles or indicate that they are all different and then label the sides with lowercase p, lowercase r, lowercase q. And then we're going to say that side PR is this side here, represented by letter q, lowercase q. So we're going to say that q squared equals, and since I have q squared, I know that the equation or the formula must end with cosine angle q, and I will continue with the rest of the terms in the formula. So we're going to say that p squared plus r squared minus 2 times pr, which are the two sides in the same side here, on the same side, cosine of angle q. So that's how we write the formula for various triangles that have various names. Now, how about the angles? Suppose we want to write the cosine law for the angle L, which is question C right here. So I know that for angles, we need to first start with cos negative 1 because I know I have to inverse cos to find the angle. And I have a big fraction in here, so I'm going to create sort of the house for my fractions, which is that number line. <laughs> and since I'm finding the angle L, I'm going to subtract L squared at the end. The other two sides that we have in here are m squared and k squared, which will be added. And down in the denominator, I always have twice m k, so m k. The same thing goes for angle q, which you can definitely try on your own. I will quickly write it down here. Again, start with cos negative 1, because we're using the cosine law. Big fraction. We're finding angle Q, so we are subtracting Q squared. And the other sides would be P squared plus R squared and divided by 2PR. So let's practice the cosine law to solve some problems. We are given a triangle ABC, and in this triangle we know the sides AB and AC and the angle in between them. We're going to say that this is a typical cosine law question where we have the mouth of a crocodile and the angle in between. So in order to solve the triangle or to find the unknown, we're going to first label all the sides of the triangle. So we have side B here and side C right here. It's in centimeters. It's probably missing. And we're going to say that First, we need to write the cosine law for the triangle. So a squared equals, I know that I must end it with cos a at the end. 
And then I fill it in with the rest of the terms, which are b squared plus c squared minus twice bc. Substitute the information, and we have b 45, so 45 squared. c is 32, 32 squared minus 2 times 45 times 32 times the cosine of 48. And then we are going to use the calculator to find this number, or the value of this expression, I should say. And we can use the calculator in one single step. It's a very uncomplicated operation to actually perform in a calculator. So 45 squared plus 32 squared minus 2 times 45 times 32 times cosine of 48. Again, remember your calculator must be in on uh, set to degree mode. And here we have the whole expression, no complications, no special brackets to use. So just type it in as you see it and press enter. And I got 1,121.9. So I'll write this down. And I will leave the answer in the calculator because I know that in order to find A, I haven't solved for A yet, I would need to square root both sides of the equation. Now remember that when we square root both sides of an equation, we should take both positive and negative answers. But because here we're talking about side lengths, we're only taking the positive. So very uncomplicated again. And I'm going to choose the square root function, which is hiding under uh, x square button, so second and this. And instead of actually entering the number, 1,129.9, I will enter the answer. So the answer will be second function and then the negative sign. So I am closer to the exact answer, 33.49 or 33.5. So 33.5 centimeters, so that would be the length to the nearest tenth, right, will be the side length A. Okay, so that's an example of how you use the cosine law to find the sides. So let's take a look at how we use the cosine law to find an angle. Again, here we're given a triangle. This time the triangle's name is MPQ. We are asked to find the unknown angle M. We're going to start by labeling the sides in relation to the angles opposite to them. So we have side M, opposite angle M, side P, opposite angle P, and side Q, opposite angle Q. Since the unknown is angle M, then we're going to start by writing the formula for angle M, and we'll say angle M equals inverse cosine. You always start with inverse cosine. Okay, so there is no rule you have to remember there. And then create this big fraction. And then we're thinking, what are we trying to find again? Side M, which means that our formula must end with take away M squared. So the rest of the terms will be the other side, so order won't matter, q squared plus p squared. And in the denominator, we we'll always divide by double the product, and then we multiply these two that are added to each other, so q times p. Now it's time for us to substitute. We have all three side lengths. It's a cosine law case, so cos negative 1. And there we go. Q is 24, so 24 squared. P is 34, so 34 squared. M is 30, so take away 30 squared, divided by 2 times 24 times 34, and obviously close the brackets. Now, let's calculate it. And before we do so, a few instructions on how to use your calculator here. Remember, this is quite a chunky expression. And especially when you have 
fractions in an expression, we have to be very careful in how we um, enter the numbers in the calculator, how we type them, because we need to keep in mind the bad math rule. And calculators are as smart as we are when it comes to giving us the right answers. If you want to perform these calculations in one step, what we must do is this. You must press first cos negative 1. So this will be your first term. The next thing that you need to enter here is the brackets. By the way, remember that cos negative 1 will be second cos. So you're going to need two buttons for that, right? And then brackets. And then you will have to open another set of brackets where you have to um, accommodate your numerator in there. So in this set of brackets, you can freely write 24 squared plus 34 squared minus 30 squared. And then divide. And you will need another set of brackets right here. And then you have to divide. That's what you have to press. And then you go 2 times 24 times 34. So yes, you're going to need the red brackets and you're going to need the multiplication in between. So you don't need brackets for 24 and 34 if you have the brackets in here. Those are the most important ones. Okay, so this will be simply multiplication. Only when we present solutions on paper, we want to put the brackets because we don't want to put a, a sometimes invisible dot in between to indicate the multiplication, okay? And then the brackets. I will show you how to do this in one step, and I will show you how to do this in multiple steps as well. I just have to remember 24, 34, and 30. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I'm going to clear everything so we can see better. And we have inverse cos, so second cos. And then I'm going to open, like one set of brackets is open, so I'm going to open another one where I want to keep my denominator in. So just to make sure, it's 24 plus 34 minus 30. Okay, so here we go, 24 squared plus 34 squared minus 30 squared. So that would be my numerator, and I'll keep my numerator in brackets. So I just close the bracket of the numerator. Then I press divide. Now I open the brackets of the denominator, which have the product of 2 by 24 and then times 34. I close the brackets of the denominator. And now I need to close the brackets of the cosine ratio. So that first bracket that you see in the expression, it's time to close it. And now you can press enter right away. And that will give you the angle 59.349. So 59.3 degrees. So we're going to say angle A, uh, sorry, angle M equals. Um, 33.5, we'll round to one decimal. Degrees. So that would be the answer. And that's how you do it in one step in your calculator. Now, what happens if you don't feel conf confident with doing things in one step? So it's very easy as well. And sometimes the long ways are the safest ways to go. So go for it if it makes you comfortable and happy. Whatever makes sense to us, that's what we should do always, okay? So we have angle M, as I said, equals inverse cos. I'm just going to rewrite the whole thing, okay? Because I want to talk. Don't want to mess up the picture there. So 24 squared plus 34 squared minus 30 squared over... 2 times 24 times 34. So I'm not doing anything new. I'm just rewriting the expression I need to evaluate. So to some people, it's easier when they write every value separately and then evaluating them. So that's what I am going to do. I strongly suggest that you keep the numerator as one operation in here. So 24 squared plus 34 squared uh, minus 30 squared. Oops. Am 
minus 30 squared. So if I do this, I get the number 832. So I'll write that down. And I'll say, well, I want to write things slowly. So cos negative 1. And I have 832. Okay. And then I have to calculate the denominator 2 times 24 times 34. So 2 times 24 times 34. And that gave me 1,632. 1,632. And now I'm going to find the angle. So cos negative 1, 832. So second cosine. And then we said 832 divided by 1,632. And see if we get the same answer. 59.5 degrees. 59 point actually 59.5 degrees is uh, 59.3 degrees will be correct oh <laughs> 59 point that is very funny so sometimes it can be confusing when we go from one page to the other especially when you are under the pressure of doing things perfect <laughs> you don't do them perfectly <laughs> so you can tell that um, well, our um, emotional states are very important in performance level. <laughs> so we get the same answer, and you can tell here in the calculator, right? So we got 59.3 degrees by doing the, all the operations separately, and 59.3 degrees, right, when we did them all in one step. So here we go. So this was uh, all for now. And um, uh, you have some practice questions uh, on your worksheet. Feel free to practice. Try to practice as soon as you un think that you've understood something because our the knowledge is fresh in our memory. So it's like you can work with your knowledge a little faster and it can get in your head um, more easily. So that was it for today and I hope everything made sense and uh, see you again.